Anaphylaxis is a fancy way of saying severe allergic reaction, one that could actually end up causing the person to die. This is one of the few emergencies where seconds matter, and you can't just whip out your phone in the moment to learn how to help. So in a world where peanut allergies seem to be neck and neck with gluten allergies, I want to make sure that you know how to help someone going through an anaphylactic reaction. What's up everybody? For those that are new here, my name is Matt. I'm a paramedic and it is my mission to help provide you with the skills and tools to potentially save a life one day. And if you want to become a part of the movement, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video so that more people can be better prepared for what life throws their way. All right, so today we're going to cover anaphylaxis, what it is, the signs and symptoms, how to treat it, and stick around until the end because we're gonna dispel three myths about anaphylaxis that you may have been tricked into believing. Anaphylaxis is defined as an acute allergic reaction to an antigen to which the body has become hypersensitive. This reaction can be caused by medication, peanuts, tree nuts, insect stings, latex, and a few other things. While many people have minor allergies to these things, anaphylaxis is a much more extreme version that can be life-threatening. Okay, so let's go over some of the symptoms the person might be experiencing during an anaphylactic reaction. They might develop trouble breathing, swelling of the face, neck, tongue, or lips, a feeling of tightness in the chest or throat, skin reactions like hives, stomach cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, or even a loss of consciousness. The person could be experiencing just one of these issues or all at the same time but the most concerning one to watch out for is trouble breathing. All right, so what do you do if someone around you is suspected of having a allergic reaction? The first thing you should do is have someone else call 911. First responders like myself have the medication and tools to help people having these deadly reactions. So the quicker you call, the quicker we can arrive. But if you are alone with the person, be sure to help treat them first before you call. That way the medication can start working while you're on the phone. Typically, people that are at an increased risk of having an anaphylactic reaction are aware of this risk already. So they probably carry an epinephrine auto injector and you can offer to help the person use the medication. This may be unnecessary if the person is still alert enough to administer it to themselves, but there could be a case where the symptoms the person is experiencing prevents them from helping themselves. So let's go over how to administer the medication. Begin by holding the person's leg firmly just above the knee to help prevent injury to the person. Then you're gonna activate the device by pushing it against the person's mid outer thigh. Unless the person has really, really thick pants on, the auto injector is designed to inject directly through any clothing. Once you've pushed it against the thigh, be sure to hold it in place for about three seconds to make sure all the medication makes its way into the muscle. After removing the auto injector, massage the injection site for at least a few seconds. Once you're done with that, be sure to handle the auto injector carefully and place it in a rigid container. Hold on to it until first responders arrive because we're gonna wanna see what size dose was administered. If the person has not gotten any relief of their symptoms after 10 minutes and they have another auto injector with them, go ahead and administer another dose. There you have it. You've now potentially saved this person's life. But before you head off, let's go over three myths that you may have been led to believe. Myth number one, only children with a history of anaphylaxis need an auto injector. People at any age can have an anaphylactic reaction and the person's doctor will determine if it's best for them to carry an auto injector with them. Myth number two, antihistamines like Benadryl can treat anaphylaxis. While antihistamines act to counter the effects of an allergic reaction, this typically takes a long time, time this person does not have if their throat is closing up. And myth number three, 
epinephrine is dangerous. While some people with pre-existing conditions could be negatively affected by epinephrine, this is taken into account by the person's doctor. So if they have an auto injector with them, do not be afraid to use it. All right, that does it for the topic of anaphylaxis today. If you found that helpful, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and share button. And as always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button over here so you don't miss any more life-saving advice in the future. And go ahead and check out one of these hand-picked videos on your screen. Take care.